action. Good morning. My name is Molly. I am a Montessori teacher. I am trained in both lower elementary and infant and toddler. And I have a lot of parents right now who are staying at home with their children and are trying to figure out ways to bring not only Montessori, but just if you don't know anything about Montessori education, you want to bring curiosity and education and independence into your home for your child while we're all sheltering in place. So I would like to show you some of the things that I gathered from my very own home since I have been on quarantine in shelter in place um, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And so if you just want to refer to this, maybe it might give you some ideas of things you can do with your children or do for your children. Montessori is all about preparing an environment and allowing you to step back and observe your child being important, being a little scientist, being able to do things that make them um, use their fingers, their hands, their gross motor skills, their fine motor skills, uh, their pre-reading skills. There's so much. I could go on and on. I always joke and say, never engage a Montessorian in a conversation about Montessori if you don't have an hour. But I would like to show you some of the things that we as Montessori teachers do that you can do right now in your homes for your young children. Um, my children in my classroom are toddlers, which is 18 months to three, but a lot of these same materials and um, activities are the same things that we put in our Montessori primary classrooms, which are for three to six year olds. They're all about preparing the hands for writing, the eyes for reading. You'll have to excuse my cats who are very curious about what I've just set out. The first thing that I want to tell you all is that it's really important for your child to have an independent workspace. And the easiest way to do that is by using a rug. You can use a towel. I'm using a bathroom rug. And I'm going to put it out right here in front of me. And I'm gonna show just a couple of the different activities that I prepared for, the, for your children. And you can do this too. Um, I scoured my kitchen, my pantry, my garage, um, my cat toys, and I came up with some neat things. If you're going to demonstrate something like this to your child, you want to do one at a time. Not all of them in one day. Demonstrate one a day. And when Fuzz is eating the <laughs> one of my works, that's too bad. We won't be able to show that one. <laughs> um, it looks like it's in a cat bowl. Okay, so when you bring it out, I would keep it under a blanket. Bring your children over. It's not a choice of whether or not to come. You say, please come to a lesson and sit your child down and show the rug. And then, very carefully, bring out oh, something new. Now, every work, we call it work because this is important for your child. These are not toys. Your child's role in your home and in your family is important. This is their job. This is their work. This is how they develop confidence and a sense of importance in the family. We always set it in some sort of an individual tray. Um, it can be, you'll see a bunch of different ones that I chose from the house. You can use plates and trays and cookie sheets and things like that. Um, set it up starting left to right, and you're going to show it to them when they're looking at it, they're going to see it left to right. That is because when children learn to read in this country, we start off reading at the top left part of the page and we go to the right, but then our eyes track back to the left. So these activities are meant to start teaching the children to track right to, uh, excuse me, left to right, and then right to left again. So we're teaching them that. It's also crossing the midline. I'm giving you a whole lot of information, but this is good stuff. When you show it, you want to say very, very little. I have something to show you.
that's a simple lesson. If you show it like that and put it available for your child, they will do that back and forth, back and forth. Please do not interrupt them. Please do not say to them, hold it like this and do it like this and hold it. Stand back and let them discover. They are amazing. When you finish showing it, watch where I put it and then you stand up and you model to your child that you are going to put it away. I have a whole bunch more on the shelf that I'll show you in a minute, but I wanna show you one more that I found and I'm going to do the voila again. Now, I don't have young children in my house anymore because my son is a college student, but he likes to drink coffee. Um, something, now I, I used a container that held just enough coffee pods to go into every one of these holes. That is a way that the work is self-correcting for the child. And so if I was showing it, There are exactly as many pods in here as there are holes here. If you don't have enough, it's okay. Don't stress, guys. We've only got what we've got in our kitchens right now. And um, I don't want you running out to Target today to buy a whole bunch of stuff because we still are in the middle of shelter in place. I want you to go to the store as less as, as least as possible. Talk to some of your friends and see if you can get a tribe together and one family goes to the store once a week and gets things for other people. That's what our family has been doing and it's been helping a lot. This kind of a work, because it's heavy, even though I did put it in a tray, it's a little bit tippy for a young child. This one I might put right next to the shelf and, and demonstrate it to the child right next to it and call it a stationary work. This one stays here. You can even put a little bath mat in front of it in the corner of the room so that the child goes over to it, uses it, and then encourage them when they're all done. All right, so I did a bunch of other ones that I wanted to show you that you can also make. Um, I, come on over. Um, I found a, a potato chip clip and some pom-poms. You can use salad tongs. Oh, they are, they, I found cat toys and so my cats are very excited about this. Again, they'll, they're gonna go back and forth. They may use their hands. That's okay. Don't correct them. If they throw it, you say, this is not a work for throwing. May I show you again? And you demonstrate it again. Try not to interrupt them when they're working hard on something. This one I, I made out, I took all the forks, knives, and spoons out of the separator tray. Um, and you could even print up a picture of a fork a, a, um, a knife, a spoon, and you know, whatever else you have. And you can put a couple of them in here and the children can sort them. But this one is just a simple sorting work. I used poker chips. And so I, when I would show it, I wouldn't even say much. I have an example, red, white, blue, and green in each spot. And I have a bunch of them here. And Ty, if you could also, <laughs> with the young children, they really love this. When you show it, you show it like this. If you could put it on my face, Ty. You're giving them that chance to think through what's going on while you're showing it. So that's a sorting work. You can do it with anything that you find. This one, um, I saw this one online. Uh, it's a colander. And if you have spaghetti noodles or anything like that, turn your colander upside down and put out some noodles and let the children poke them in. That's pretty easy. I used um, too thin of noodles, but that's all I had because we don't have any spaghetti in our house but that can keep a child busy for quite some time. Don't use them all in one day. Uh, put out several, and if they break, put out some more. This one I used, I found some pom-poms in, um, in my cat toys again, and I found a, a bundt pan. Stick it in, push. 
push, push. When they're all done, they pull them out, put them back in. It's ready for the next friend, well, or sibling, whoever you have in the house. Uh, I already showed the one with the balls. This one, well, this one looked a lot better before my cat got to it because he saw it in a bowl and he thought it was food for him. But um, I had one of those trays that you can uh, make candy molds in. And I had, I counted how many spots there were, which was 15. And sorry about this. I had 15 little goldfish crackers. You could use cereal, you could use, well, don't use cat food if you have cats because that'll just draw them over more. Um, but anything that you have that's um, small Rice Krispies, um, pretzels, whatever, um, you can use ice cube trays for this or muffin pans. And again, you just show it. If you're gonna show it with something edible, be prepared for the fact that your children are gonna eat it. So um, what you might say when you're showing it at your rug is, um, this bowl of goldfish crackers is not for eating, it's for putting in. Very silently, very slowly. And when you get it all done, then you can help them count as you put it away. So you'd say one, two, slowly and gracefully, you're modeling the respect for this. These are regular old materials, but suddenly they're becoming magical to the children. They're becoming um, enticing and, and, and they're, they're inspiring them to, to discover and to explore. Uh, the last one I made, my husband, who is filming us right now, came up with this idea because he cut an egg crate and I found some marbles in my game cabinet. Game pieces are also really good to use. Um, also remember that if you have a, a really, really young child, marbles are not good because they can be choke hazards, but it is amazing how when you demonstrate it as something very respectful and very quiet and slow, Okay, so you get the idea, I won't bore you. Um, but anyway, I wanted to be able to do that for you so that you can, you know, go on a scavenger hunt right about now and start looking around in your homes and, and finding some things, put these out. I've made a whole shelf. It's too bad I don't have a toddler or a primary child that's living with me because I've got a whole Montessori practical life classroom set up right here. Um, I hope this helps everybody. Um, I've been trying to read some stories to all of you um, each night. Uh, and so those are also available, but parents keep reading with your children. That, if anything, I can tell you in all of this, put the electronics away as much as possible and enjoy the gift in all of this. Um, be with your children, be present with them, make eye contact with them, hug them, help them wash their hands. You know the song, wash, wash, wash your hands, wash them nice and clean. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash them nice and clean. They need to wash their hands for that long to be getting all those germs off under the running water. Um, it's really important for us to be staying healthy right about now um, and um, be there for each other, okay? Uh, talk to each other on the phone, on Zoom, on FaceTime, and reach out to one another because this is the one time in our lives that we all need to really, really care for one another. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I hope this helps. Take care.